these weather buoys actually cost like a couple million dollars a year. Um, not because the buoy itself costs much money, but because a servicing, the, the kind of ship that it takes to go out and service one of these things costs about $100,000 a day. Right? And when it takes you five or ten days to get out to fix the broken solar panel, um, you know, you, you, you've blown a million dollars on, one, on one, one servicing trip. Whereas our little guys, they just try to drive themselves out to the middle of the Atlantic. They sit there doing donuts. If they're starting to develop some issue, they, you know, we have another one swim out. And the one that was there, he, he kind of swims in. Um, so it's the weather buoy that, that installs itself. Um, we get used for pollution monitoring, and that's uh, that's a that's an oil rig in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. Um, there are these gizmos that you, you can put on these things that, that, that um, it's called a barometer that, 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 that measures various things about water chemistry. Uh, we can detect oil and, and um, algae and turbidity, you know, sort of crap. Um, and there's actually some some folks that have like little DNA sequencers, so you can actually get like, like little, little microplankton streaming through and what you get out is DNA sequences. Um, those are really cool, we just don't have anywhere near enough bandwidth to, 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 to send all this DNA data back, it's like, it doesn't work. Um, interesting things with like, like marine mammal monitoring, it seems kind of odd that that would be a, a big business, but it turns out that, that the oil companies really care about it because there are all kinds of restrictions on them about, you know, doing things that would kill marine mammals uh, when there are marine mammals around. You know, the, the, the seismic guys can't let off their bombs in the ocean when there's a whale nearby. Um, or the, the drilling rigs can. And the way that the, the guys with drilling rigs work is they actually have like four guys with binoculars on the corners of the rigs staring out at the ocean going, uh, yeah, it looks like a whale. Um, but it's kind of hard to tell the difference between, a, between a, a whale's tail at a long distance and just a, a weird wave. Uh, so the big deal for them is they end up shutting down when they, when they shouldn't. And, and it's also really hard to operate at night because you can't visually see crap out there. Um, but you can do a, could do a much better job acoustically. And the problem with acoustics is that is that if you try to put like a uh, like, 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 like hydrophones right around a rig or on a ship near a rig that the, 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 the mechanical noise from those things really pollutes the signal. And, and our little guys with their, their little wings, um, they make essentially no noise at all. So what you get is it's pretty much perfect acoustic recordings. Um, we can like patrol marine sanctuaries, we um, you know, get involved in global warming studies. We did did one in the Arctic Ocean uh, last year. And, um, you know, it's like be afraid. Um, yeah, we did that. We did a, did a survey of water temperatures in the Arctic, um, and that was a, that was a really a be afraid moment. Um, so one of the things that's cool about our robots is that they're really really robust. Right, the 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 the, the, the hulls are these 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 wonders of, of Aircraft design. We have a bunch of aircraft engineers um, who do a lot of the the, the, the hull design and the, and the wing design, and that and that and that crazy cable that goes in between um, is designed to take you know pretty phenomenal stresses. Um, so 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 we've been through well, like like we had a couple that that, that went through the, the the bad parts of Hurricane Isaac. Um, we've been through a, a Category Four uh, tropical monsoon. Um, we, you know, it's it's. There was one little little video I wanted to, to bring, but I couldn't get the right people to like approve because um, it's not our data. Um, but but like in, in 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 hurricane kind of events in the Gulf of Mexico, when you look at all the all the ship tracking data, you can see the, all the ships. They just they just like leave the Gulf and they head for the they they, they head for all the all these harbors. And our little guys, they just like stay out there. Because they're powered by the waves, you know. You you give them, you know, a ten meter wave, and they go, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and a ten meter wave is pretty frightening. Um, and and these guys, they they actually do okay. 
Um, and you know, we get shark attacks. Um, this is this is one that sort of got chomped on a little bit. Um, mostly, it just gets scratches. We did have a, this one actually had its, its little the, the communication cable into the rudder got severed, so it ended up like drifting 100 miles off of Maui. So we had to go and had to go and rescue him. Um, so I was talking about the the, 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 the data coming off of the, you know, the streaming. Um, I, I did this evaluation of like you know all these all these NoSQL things. So um, I did something that, that it, it's either one of the coolest things I've done in the last several years or one of the stupidest, and I still haven't decided. Which is I you know went and built my own my own little NoSQL-ish um, database thing. So and it, and it contains. Let's see, it's got nodes. The, the nodes contain contain data, um, and it's a publish and subscribe kind of deal. It's publishes the data and it subscribes data. It's 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 kind of like 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 JMS, except that it's really about um, small bits of binary telemetry. Um, and uh, the, the 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 publish and subscribe parts have not just interest but authentication because I've actually got privileges and and, and rights for all the subscribers. And requirements on all the, on all, the, all the publishers. So, so, so a publisher that says, you know, here, here's weather data, and somebody who's subscribing to weather data, you know, it's like which which data are you allowed to receive? Um, and that and that made the whole architecture kind of kind of entertaining, and how things sort of shuffle around. But as soon as, soon as you've got a publisher and subscribe network, you can connect them together in the chat. Then you take a bunch of them and they and then make a mesh, um, and then and then. Data comes in and off the off the satellite, and now it just sort of gets, gets replicated through. One of the things that's sort of different about about my world is it's not a big data thing, right? So I can afford to replicate stuff all over the place, and I can afford to do duplicate uh, message sends all over the place, and it's not a big deal. Um, but I can also detect duplicates, so that I can just just blast things around. And if you if I've seen it before, I've seen it before, so I just do do fairly straightforward echo cancellation. Um, one of the nice things about the way that it got that I put it together was um, really, really paranoid about reliability in this thing because um, you know if we have a you know if, if the data center goes down or whatever we've got like um, a lot of robots out of control in the middle of the ocean. Fortunately, they, they don't have like laser cannons on them, so they can't do. <laughs> Like serious damage, and they're about the size of a the size of a surfboard. So if they like bump into something, you know they're going to lose. Um, but um, you know there have been all kinds of issues with with with, with various hosting providers. Um, you know either either you know where they where they the hosts actually reside, or if they have like systemic failures, like the systemic failure that, that Amazon had a year or so ago, made me like really nervous. Um, so I, 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 I was really religious about using none of the special APIs that ISPs provide. Um, and that lets me build clusters where the nodes in different clusters are not just in different data centers, but they're at different service providers. Um, and currently I'm using three service providers. I use, use GoGrid. Uh, that's where we do a bunch of stuff because we actually have some Windows machines. Um, that predates me and really makes my skin crawl, but it actually works. Um, we've got some stuff at Edmontic, which is a really interesting little high reliability hosting provider. They um, they, they use Illumos. So they used to it used to be Solaris until the, the pricing became outrageous. Uh, and then they, then they do some stuff on on, on Jelastic, um, and I've been a real Jelastic fan. Um, and, 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 and so it, 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 it let, let, lets me really split things up. And one of the, 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 the things that I get out of that is when I have an app, a, 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 an app can subscribe to not just one node in the cluster, but multiple nodes in the cluster. And yet it'll get duplicate, duplicate data, and it can squelch the, the duplicate data. But if any part of the, of the, of the network goes down, the app doesn't actually even see a failure, right? And it actually sort of maximizes performance because the the app takes the data data sample, you know, the, the earliest one that it receives. It doesn't have to, you know, wait for some consensus. It just takes the first one that arrives, and the the, the, the next copies of it it just drops on the floor. 
So I send a lot of redundant data around, but it gives me pretty extreme reliability in the face of all kinds of weird failures. Um, and then you can take these nodes and you can these these clusters and think of them as nodes, and then you can actually do publish and subscribe between clusters, um, and and do some of that for like sharding. Although right now we don't have anywhere near enough data to need to need to to shard. But we do some delivering to customer private data centers. Um, you know, when you've got data, you, know, you often really care about where it physically resides for sort of like legal reasons. And some of it's, you know, privacy in, 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 in the EU 